field to manage the chaos, the government set up an action group chaired by the Transport Minister, Lord MacDonald. I should say that uh, John Prescott's actually up in the Commons on questions uh, today. He's got Last month, Railtrack presented their latest progress report on removing speed restrictions. 160 at 40 and 143 at 60 mile per hour. 23 of the 28 train operating companies are working at or close to normal timetables. In explaining why the government wouldn't buy back Railtrack, John Prescott said he didn't want to make its fat cat directors fatter. Now he's promising to rebuild the railways through what he calls a public-private partnership. And who are his main partners in this enterprise? The rail track directors. The government's public-private partnership is the heart of their 10-year plan for the railways set out in a glossy brochure. The deputy prime minister has made some extraordinary claims about how much will be spent on the railways under new labour. 100 new rail stations, 1,000 new train services a year, every day, and we are getting more rail investment for 10 years than the last 100 years. More than all the new lines, electrification, the engines and coaches of the last century, that does seem a bit far-fetched. It would be wrong, wouldn't it, to say that uh, there's going to be more rail investment in the next 10 years than in the past 100 years? More in this particular 10-year period than the whole of the 100 years put together? Correct. Uh, yes, I wouldn't have thought that uh, a statement like that would have been made. John Prescott said precisely that at the Labour Party conference in 1999, but that couldn't possibly be true, could it? Well, what we know is that uh, we've got a very big investment program, obviously, going forward, uh, which I think would uh, dwarf the investment of most comparable 10-year periods over the past 100 years. Last year, Mr. Prescott made a slight adjustment to this claim, but it still sounded like the biggest investment program in the history of the railways. So in the railways, we'll see more investment in our railways in the next 10 years than at any time since the age of steam. That's just as misleading, isn't it? No, what we're talking about here is uh, a period of a decade, and the comparison clearly in any commonsensical reading of that would be that we were comparing decade with decade, period with period, and uh, what we are saying is that you will see a very significant increase over the next 10 years, and that's obviously what the Deputy Prime Minister was uh, saying there. The government may have promised 60 billion for rail under its 10-year plan, but most of this, 34 billion, is not guaranteed. It has to be raised from the private sector. The rest, 26 billion, comes from the public purse, the taxpayer. In real terms, that's just two and a half billion more in public expenditure than was spent on the railways in the last 10 years. The government, however, claims it represents a major increase because under the Tories, public subsidy to the railways was supposed to be phased out. New track, new trains, new signalling, new services, new stations. All done by new labour. Is that a controversial way of putting it? We'll only get those if Railtrack and the train companies can raise the 34 billion private money. And to do that, they must meet some very ambitious targets. First, they'll have to increase their revenue with a 51% rise in new passengers like James Janes. After Hatfield, that may be a triumph of hope over expectation. For some people, being at the mercy of a railway you can no longer rely on has proved too much. With cars increasingly jamming the roads, there's only one place left to go. Since Hatfield, there's been a 14% jump in air travel thanks to disgruntled rail passengers. The Midland Main Line from Sheffield to London has had to compete with a new air taxi service. I was on the train shortly after Hatfield, and after sitting for five hours on the train, it gets very soul destroying. I used to use trains all the time, but of course before Christmas, with all the trouble on the train, I had to cancel all my appointments. they set this service up permanently, do you think you'll stick with this or will you go back to the trains if they get back to normal? If this is a permanent um, trip, then yes, I will stick with this trip. 
For the business traveller used to first class, this service from Sheffield could be a flyer. The organisers of the air taxi hope to replace this small aircraft with a 46-seater. OK, so it was quick and it was reliable, but it must have cost you a bomb. No, actually, it's not that much more expensive, about 30 or 40 pounds. Since Hatfield, one of the railway's longest standing freight customers has also been taking to the air. Loss of business from old friends like the post office also threatens the government's 10-year plan since it depends on the train companies earning extra profits from an 80% increase in rail freight. At the height of the Hatfield crisis, the Royal Mail hired up to 32 extra aircraft because they no longer trusted the trains. Our confidence has been severely dented and we look for action to demonstrate the fact that it is going to improve, not promises but action. The thing that the post office is looking for, above all else, are spe is speed and reliability. If we don't have speed and reliability, we can't improve the services for our customers. So therefore, that's what we look for the rail industry to provide. If the rail industry can't provide that, then we're going to have to, uh, in part, we're going to have to um, use other modes of transport to actually give the service to our customers. The loss of confidence by both freight and passengers threatens the extra revenue so vital to the 10-year plan. Back on our journey, James James is at last approaching the end of the line. Uh, here we are at King's Cross, 10 to 10, and that's about an hour longer than normal, but this is where my day starts. So now I'm into the tube. See you later. Here in London, there's another threat to the 10-year plan. For train companies to carry so many more passengers, Railtrack will have to build new lines. And to do this, they'll need to raise billions from the city. But the chaos of Hatfield has turned Railtrack's profits into losses. Railtrack is running short of cash to service the huge loans it's required to take on under the 10-year plan. By 2006, some projections put Railtrack's debt at 14.5 billion. The interest would be over 1 billion a year. We found deep scepticism in the city that Railtrack will be making anything like enough to afford this. The full 10-year plan can't be financed from today's revenue stream from Railtrack. On our calculations, the net debt rises to around £14 billion by 2006, which is very difficult to finance from the sort of revenue stream this company's got. Um, so I think it'll have to be scaled back from what the government's sort of dream for the industry is. In fact, we understand Railtrack is already scaling back the dream. The plan calls for £8 billion worth of projects from Railtrack over the next five years. But after Hatfield, they're so pushed for cash, they're already talking about reducing this to £2 billion and have begun negotiating with the government. You don't think you're going to have to scale back this 10-year plan? We don't at the moment see that uh, there's any possibility that we would be required to scale back on the 10-year plan. Rail track are already having to scale back on some of the projects that have been planned for the first five years of the 10-year plan. Uh, there's been talk to us of scaling back eight billion pounds worth of projects to perhaps two or three billion. Well, we, of course, um, are in negotiations. Three quarters of the projects planned for the first half of the 10 year plan. We're uh, rail track at the moment, and uh, clearly, if people are in a negotiating position, you would expect to hear loud squeals of anguish coming through. The travelling public have now been told that 85% of rail services are back to normal. But even before Hatfield, normal meant a service that overall was getting later and less reliable. The government may have a plan for the railways, but beyond Hatfield, delivery is what the people are crying out for. If you want confidence back in the trains, then it's going to have to improve. No end. It's just gone downhill, downhill, downhill. When's it going to be back together and will it be better?